What is going on guys? Hope you're having an amazing day. I'm the AI guy and in today's video I'm going to give you all an introduction to machine learning and we're going to solve a classification problem together. So what exactly are we going to do today? Well, we're going to walk through the famous IRIS data set. We're going to get you familiar with the powerful machine learning, learning library called Scikit. I'm also going to teach you how to approach ML problems and how to work with data, splitting, training, and testing it. I'm also going to show you how to build numerous different machine learning models and how to determine which is best for your data. I'm going to code in Jupyter Notebook using Python, so you'll also be able to pick up the basics of Jupyter and interactive Python. By the end of the video, you should be able to know how to approach machine learning problems and the steps to take in order to solve them. Well, that's enough talking about the video. Let's get right into it. All right, guys, first things first. If you're new to Jupyter, I want to give you guys a little intro. So Jupyter Notebook is an interactive shell that allows you to program and really just visualize your data and see graphs all at once. You don't have to run the whole file. You can run certain cells. So it's really cool. And if you see here, it evolved to support interactive data science and scientific computing. So it's great for machine learning. And today we're going to cover it. Um, if you want to check out more about it, you can go to jupyter.org. Uh, and then we'll show you how to download it now. So you're going to go into any folder you want to work in. If you don't have Jupyter, you're just going to go pip install Jupyter. I already have it, so I'm not going to run it. And then to open the Jupyter Notebook, you literally just type in the folder that you want, Jupyter Notebook. And that'll start running it in the terminal, and it'll pop up in your browser. Boom. So now this is the Jupyter interface. We have it open. So what you're going to want to do is go to New, open a new notebook, Python 3. Boom. So let's go ahead and name our notebook. Let's go ahead and call it Iris Tutorial, as we'll be dealing with the Iris Flower data set. Let's rename that. And as you can see here, Jupyter Notebooks end in an IPYMB file format. So that's just the Jupyter Notebook, if you haven't seen that before. All right, so first things first, Jupyter allows you to code and use Markdown language. That's used in like readme's and stuff like that. So you can just go here, Markdown, and one pound sign is for your header one. So we're going to do Iris Classification Tutorial. And then to run a cell, you either do Control Enter to run the current cell, and you can do Shift Enter to run the current cell and then open a new one. So Shift Enter. It drops down to new cell, and now we have two cells, and the result will always stay there. So that's the cool thing about Jupyter Notebook is we can do print hello, shift enter. We can see the out the output, and we can keep doing other stuff. So when we start working with our data sets, we'll be able to see our data sets and continue on and see them while we work, which is really cool. So for today's video, we're going to use a data set from the Scikit-Learn library. If you're new to Scikit-Learn, it is one of the most powerful and well-known machine learning libraries, especially for Python. It's very simple and allows you to do all sorts of machine learning problems. As you can see here, you can learn about classification, regression, clustering, pre-processing, model selection. So pretty much all your basics uh, for machine learning, you can learn using Scikit and do through Scikit. And it also has a bunch of data sets that you can load in super easily. So that's what we're going to do today. So the data set we're going to be using today is the Iris data set from Scikit. Um, it's a data set that has three different types of irises of fl certain flowers types, the Setosa, Versicolor, and the Virginica. It's a very simple data set. It only has a couple rows, what we'll see. And it's very good because it allows for linear and nonlinear models to be built. So it's very versatile. And if you want to learn more, you can check it out here on Scikit. But let's get into it. 
Okay, so we go back to our file. I've gone ahead with the liberty of adding in all the headers for us, and I filled in the seven steps that I would always want to implement with every machine learning problem that I come across. This is kind of like a roadmap to follow. You can always follow whenever you approach a problem, these seven steps. So we got import required dependencies, load the IRIS data set, which is load your data set, summarize your data set, peak your data, data visualization, evaluate your algorithm, and make predictions. So we'll hop into number one, import required dependencies. We'll click on the cell. Another little Python Jupyter Notebook tip is if you want to insert a cell above, you go A. And then if you want to insert a cell below, you go B. You click B. Uh, so we won't want this one. We'll delete that. To delete, you click double D, D twice. So let's start importing. So we'll do our import statements. We'll start with the basics that we always want to have that you'll use no matter what you probably do. So import numpy as np. Import pandas as pandas as pd. Sorry. Import matplotlib. Matplotlib dot pyplot as plt. These are kind of the main ones you always want to have. Um, here's a style thing I like to do. Plot dot style dot use. Uh, and then ggplot. This is just nice for plotting images and graphs. Nice visualization. So we have this, and if we run this cell by using control enter, we'll see that it's going to take some time. The asterisk means that it's running. Um, if you might be wondering, oh, what do I do if I don't have these dependencies already installed on my Python interpreter? You could go back to your um, Ming GW or whatever command line you're using and do a pip install. But I'll actually show you also how to do a pip install in your Jupyter Notebook. So to install a pip package in your current Jupyter Notebook, you just do import sys and sys.executable, your pip install. So if I run that, control enter, it'll probably come up that I already have it. Yeah, I already have it. But if you don't already have it, that'll download it for you. So you can do that. Okay, so now if we want to load our data sets, we're going to have to do one more import dependency. We're going to have to go from sklearn import data sets. So we'll do control enter and run that cell again. Go down here, click B. And now we can load our data set. So we'll call it iris equals data sets dot load underscore iris. And that's a function that'll load the data set for us into iris. So control enter. Oh, it ran perfectly. But how can we justify that? Let's just do type iris. OK, so it's a bunch. That makes sense. Because a bunch is a type of dict, dictionary. And that's what we would expect our data set to be. So that's all it is to load your data set. It's pretty simple. If you're using an scikit-learn data set, it'll be load in the name of the data set. So we can move on to three. So to begin summarizing our data set, we want to see into the bunch. So let's print the keys, iris.keys. And this will give us all the different keys of our dictionary type. So we can see that our data set has a data field, target, target names, desk, which is description, feature names, and file name. So cool. We got that. Let's go below. And let's now see the difference. Let's print the types of our data and our target to see what they actually are, because that's what we'll be working with. So I'll just do a print type for the data and the labels, because target is the labels that we want. Type iris data and type iris target. So this should print out, yes, the type of our data field and our target field, and they're both NumPy ND arrays, which is perfect. 
So now we want to print the shape of our data. That's another good practice to always do. So we go to iris.data.shape, and this will show us how much we have. So we can see that our data set is 150 rows. So we have 150 entries in our data set, and they each have four columns. So we're starting to see the shape of our data and what it looks like and what we're working with. So let's go below. And let's get the different label names. So we're just going to go iris.target. That's where I said the labels are. Dot, oh, target names. So we can say that what we have, we have three different types of irises, Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. So those are the three different classifications that we're going to be trying to make through training our data and then testing it. So that's pretty much it for summarizing this data set. You really just want to see what's in the data by doing the keys and seeing the different fields, then looking at the types so you know how to manipulate and what you're working with for your data. Uh, to see the shape, that will give you the rows and the columns so you know the size of your data set. Um, and then printing the labels is in target names. So that sees how many classification types there are to make. So step number four is to peek your data. So peeking your data really is just allows you to kind of look at the actual data inside your data set and kind of do a EDA, which is exploratory data analysis, and see what type of models might be good solutions to move forward with before just jumping in and trying to solve without knowing which way to go. So yeah, let's say perform EDA, exploratory data analysis. Um, so X data set is iris.data. So that's the data we want to be training with. And Y is the label. So that's the target. So now we have our X, which is our data, and Y, which is our labels. So now we're going to want to use pandas. So we're going to create data frame, df equals pd dot data frame. And we're going to have our X, and then our columns equal iris dot feature names. So these are the names of the columns. And then df.head lets you print the first five entries in your data. So it kind of lets you look at the data without printing at all. You can put in any number you want here, and it'll uh, show you that many uh, fields, rows in your data. So we'll run that. Cool. So we can see that we have these are the four columns, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. So those are the four features that we're using to hopefully be able to train and predict the labels and classifications of the iris. OK, so we have our basic uh, EDA down. So now we're going to go into more of a statistical summary. So I'll actually create a markdown for this. So you guys have a nice header, uh, 4.1. Co. My spelling's not great. Summary. And now, let's we look at this. It's pretty simple. So you should do data frame dot describe, and this will give you a bunch of good information about your data set. So it gives you the count in each column, the mean, standard deviation, and then it sorts it and gives you the min. 25% IL, 50% IL, 75 and max. So it's cool to see the different uh, deviation in within your data. And if you had empty fields, you would see it in the count. Easy way to see if you have empties. Otherwise, it's just a good way of visualizing your data a little bit more and seeing if anything's missing, seeing if there's kind of a skew, if something seems off. So next is class distribution. So we'll do another markdown header, 4.2 this time. So
So if we go below here, we're just going to print df dot group by, and this will give us a layout of how many for each classification there are. So you can see if, oh, our data is very biased towards, it only has one classification of this type of virus and 149 of another. But as you can see, Scikit-learn is generous enough and they've given us 50 entries for each uh, iris type, each classification. So it's perfectly split and that's what we want to see. We kind of, that way our training and testing can be split uh, evenly and not have to worry about um, having way more of one type and uh, not being able to classify the other properly. So let's take a look at what we've done so far up to the data visualization part. So we started with our importing our required dependencies. We did the basics and our data set. We loaded our data set in. We've summarized our data set by looking at the different fields, the keys of our dictionary. We've printed the type of our data and our target, both NumPy arrays. We've looked at the shapes. We know how many rows and columns we're dealing with. We've also printed our labels. So we know the three classifications that we're going to have to make. We've peaked our data performed our exploratory data analysis and printed a sample of what our data actually looks like. And we've described our data so we can see if anything is off or is not the way we expect it to be. And we've also looked at the class distribution to make sure we have even amounts of data. So that's really the first part of this um, tutorial. And I think I'm going to leave it there and make a separate video for the data visualization, evaluate your algorithms and make predictions because that really deserves um, a video of its own and really shows why we're going to choose certain models and how to evaluate our models to see whether they're any good and then test to see if um, we've trained properly. Also, if you guys want to actually look at the code, um, I'll post the link to my GitHub account, which will have the entire code down below in the description. So feel free to click on that, clone the code, and play around with it yourself. So yeah, thanks so much guys. Hope you like this video. Drop a like and subscribe down below and look forward to part two where we're really going to get into the meat of it.